Well, that was the Q&A. We bounce out of that and um, we can chat for a little bit right here. Um, hang on. I gotta turn this off and this off and turn, what's this? Oh, Deadpool. And there's me. There we go. Huh. Um, I, I mean, some of those are really good answers. I'm surprised they actually took a good chunk of hard questions. I mean, if you guys are watching the actual official chat, it, it really shows you just, I mean, Twitch chat will Twitch chat, but it's kind of disgusting how trollish the community is and how disrespectful and spammy it all is, so. Oh well. We can talk for a little bit about stuff if you guys had any questions and my thoughts of it. It came up earlier today, uh, people missed Josh's uh, Weekly Marmots and or PST videos. It's a thing that I want to produce more combined and structured content for YouTube soon. I would love to do a, a, a PST style thing like Josh used to do back in the day. So, but overall, I think the um, Q&A was pretty good. I don't... He didn't answer the recolor question. I think the recolor question thing to me really doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but it was kind of how the old game was. But like here, in, in PvE, the gear in normal heroic is like clean and nice, and the mythic gear, the mythic set gear, is like all fell corrupted and gunky because you're getting deeper into the the whole ebb and flow of of Gul'dan and Archimonde and the Legion and the bad stuff. But then why does the PvPers get that too? That's my thing. The recolors, like, they make sense, it's fine. I think it's it's honestly comes down to a a art standpoint where their artists are probably working on the next expansion now and possibly the holdover patch that's gonna be before 7-0. So if they need to cut an extra set of armor that we're gonna like not really care about too much anyway to make sure that we have lots and stuff going into 7-0, then that's that's fine. I think it's fine. Uh, sort of yes and no, um, Mortem. My thing is, I'll have a 730 weapon working on Archimond. And when you're working on Archimond in Mythic, I'm talking about Mythic, I'll have a 730 weapon working on Archimond who drops 735. It doesn't matter that he drops 735 weapons, because you can't have that before you fight the boss. All that matters going into Archimond is that you have 730 gear, because the highest gear you can get before you fight Archimond, right? Once you get Archimon down, you're on farm. So who honestly then gives a crap about the gear you get of Archimon? It's kind of weird that I won't be getting a 735 weapon, but again, who, who cares? You're on farm then, so it doesn't matter. It might be different for like heroic and normal guilds, where like normal Archimon gear is like, you get that halfway through heroic progression. So certain classes get a certain bigger benefit in normal than they do going to heroic. And it kind of helps the, the heroic clear guild that'll do multiple heroic clears to get as much Archimon loot as possible to have the best benefit going into Mythic. But I honestly don't think five eye levels is going to be a huge swing in overall damage. Like five eye levels? What's five eye levels? You see power gains at 12 to 15 eye levels, maybe even 10, but five? And it's, from my perspective, I look at Heroic and Mythic Hellfire Citadel as 26 bosses. Four, 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 one, four, 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 one. Right? Because that's the eye level changes at four bosses, four bosses, four bosses, then one, four bosses, four bosses, four bosses, and one. There's 26 bosses in Hellfire Citadel for me. So I, I think it's okay. It does create a better flow where you feel like you're actually gaining power the deeper you go into the dungeon, but it does have a weird disparity with drops and certain class combinations. Um, I'm gonna keep up with the chat, it's gonna be way behind. Um, they didn't ask anything about PvP because it's not a PvP questionnaire. Ian has a Costas Watcher, is a lead game designer. He knows of class balance going into PvP, but he's not a PvP designer. He designs the PvE world. It's part of the PvE world design crew. He doesn't do PvP. They're not going to ask PvP questions when 
he's not the PvP guy. That's um, Brian Halinka and his crew. Different crews entirely. So. Yeah, figures. The chat was toxic because of so many viewers, but sure. I think it's been too casual after Wrath. Do you think was the problem? I don't think it's too casual. Obviously, because Mythic Raiding is being seen by less than 1% of the population of the game. Maybe about 1%. Definitely not too casual. I think what Ian said at the beginning about Garrison's rewarding you too heavily was definitely true. Um, you know how you get the buff back in Valor Town? When you had a Valor buff, when your main was capped on Valor, your ults would gain more on that account, on that server? I don't know if it was account bound or server bound that your ults would gain more valor, right? What it sounded like he's doing is that once you have done certain things, maybe on a daily basis or a weekly basis on your main character in your garrison, it will diminish the returns of probably gold, herbs, or maybe even work orders on your ults on the same server. Like you'll get a buff that will diminish their effectiveness. So you don't feel like you're farming 11 characters. They can get something, but the more you farm your garrison on other characters, the less rewards you get. I guess you'll still get rewards. But right now, it's incredibly pigeonholing, and it ruins the market entirely, I think, because you are forced right now, almost, sort of, not really anymore now, but you were a couple months ago, to have multiple ults. I had to have three ults at the launch of the game to make one item before progression started because I wanted to have make sure I had one high-level crafted weapon. And that was only made possible because of the alt system and having multiple characters and multiple garrisons. If they had it from the start that additional garrisons on alts weren't as effective, it put more priority on the fact that you have to make sure you maintained your main garrison. I think that we've really affected. They've obviously seen this now as a problem because you're so tied into make sure you do all your chores every day. And that's bad. That's bad. Catch up with the chat real quick. Eh, five eye levels on 20 people. Eh. Again, like, Archimon, in the grand scheme of the eye level thing, Mythic Archimon's gear doesn't matter. Because when Archimon dies, you're done. So who cares? Heroic to Mythic? Maybe. But it's not going to matter that much. And if you're a Heroic Raiding Guild that's not going to raid Mythic ever, then your Manoroth and Archimon loot will be fine. Like, it doesn't matter. Like, Mythic Archimon's gear that he drops does not matter. It only makes farm easier because you get the next level of trinket. But who cares? Like, Heroic Warforged Archimon trinkets are, like, the best thing you can get uh, from him, honestly. Because those will last a long on certain classes and specs that really use the trinkets to their full potential. Some of the trinkets suck. So. They're not going to talk about legendaries, uh, Garadar. I think the legendary system will probably be fixed in 7.0. I know they've kind of failed at thinking that we're going to do legendaries, um, like drop legendaries in Warlords, which would be kind of fun, I suppose. But they never did that. How much did I gain from eye level increase? Well... The eye level increase that happened in BRF was plus five on an entire raid group at once. This, you're never gonna feel like that when you're progressing through a steadily increasing raid difficulty where some people might have an item that's five eye levels above your item because it's not happening at once. The BRF plus five was a plus five to all 20 people in a mythic raid or all 30 people in a heroic raid. That's a huge power gain on the scale of your entire raid getting buffed at the same time. But if you just kill the boss, and, you know, X and Y, Z rogue has a dagger that has five eye levels more than other rogue. Like, is that rogue with the five eye level dagger going to do, like, thousands of more DPS? No. No. I think the weapon issue is probably the biggest factor with two-hand classes. Because all you have is that one weapon. So, like, two-hand frost, even the two-hand frost is going to be wicked good anyway because of how many buffs it got. Or, like, red pallies, even though they're going to be, eh, a mythic rating. I, don't think, I hope I answered your question. I'm still, I'm, I'm behind in chat, obviously. 
but I'll trust. He's not a PvP designer. He didn't answer PvP questions. He's not PvP. Yeah, and if you get a Warforged 730 weapon, then you're already above Archimonde gear anyway. So, like, if you get lucky at 730 eye level and get a Warforged weapon or get a socketed 730, you're not at a huge disparity anyway because you're you're at Ar you're at Archimonde loot, right? And again, Archimon loot and mythic difficulty does not matter. It, it totally doesn't even matter. Oh no, what happened? I wonder if Raid 2 was just spam or it was an actual question. Oh, just spamming letters. Okay. Yeah, 13 bosses relative to the two difficulties in endgame mythic raiders because they're going to do multiple heroic clears first, then you'll do mythic. And you'll still be clearing heroic for a couple of weeks. We might even do a normal clear because the set bonuses are really important and the eye level drop for certain classes, like healers, for example, will be good to have set bonuses for. When will they do a PvP Q&A? Oh, I'm not sure. Uh, Lore said something about that at the beginning of the episode, that they might hopefully do a sit-down with Halinka. Even though, like, I don't know how the balance in PvP is. I assume that the Ashran changes, even though they are forced, will be better than how PvP is currently. I don't know how the actual balance that on PvP very often. Like, I, I don't. Because um, I don't have time to PvP. So, I used to. Is there BT Sunwell gear was the same for PvP PvE? Yeah, I know. It's the same. Just different colors. So it's fine. Laura's hair is definitely pretty great. Well, so Crispy, if you missed, if you're still here, if you missed the whole discussion about demonology warlocks, I'm surprised Ian even said it because like I have little birds, so I learn things, and I can't just like Say he's open on chat. I don't want to either get in trouble or propagate rumor mill or tinfoil hats and things. But I had heard that they were nerfing demonology warlocks because A, it was too good. B, there was an interesting skill cap involved that it was too hard for certain pe people to play. And most classes right now are relatively easy to play, honestly. Um, depending on how procky or RNG oriented or kind of ridiculous the rotations require you. But demonology warlock was too good. It was too reliable. It was too abusable by high end guilds. And if they want to overhaul Demonology Warlocks in 7.0, possibly making it an actual tank spec, what they're doing is they're nerfing Demonology so that you're not thinking you have three specs as a Warlock to do DPS at an endgame, like, rating level. They're, make, they're softening the blow now, even though it's kind of, you know, if you like DPSing as Demonology, then, it, you, you know, you kind of deal with it. But if Demonology suddenly becomes a tank spec in 7-0, and you're like, what? And there was no bl softening of the blow right now, then it would be a huger outcry than like nerfing it now and openly saying that's the, their goal intent, not to make it a tank class, I'm just making that up right now, but they're gonna be changing it a lot. That's the whole thing. I think it's smart, honestly, to nerf it now to sort of get Warlocks in the mentality that they can play Destro and Affliction based off of single target or AoE situations. And then when it changes in 7-0, then it won't be a huge, like, you know, we'll see. And now Chad is, is max, so I have to catch up. Uh, uh, Martin, no. We're probably going to see 7-0 next uh, May, June when the movie comes out. The movie will definitely come out with some World of Warcraft tie-in. Of course it will. So, the movie comes out in June. We'll see the next expansion May, June next year. Uh. Yeah, I don't know that Gone Fish and the whole elemental enhancement thing. I personally think enhancement should get the Frost Death Knight treatment, dual wield enhancement, 
gets Lava Lash, so it can AoE more efficiently. Two-hand enhancement gets like empowered storm striking and super crazy wind fury and more lightning bolt procs for more single target. So a two-hand enhancement shaman is more single target focused, and a dual-wield enhancement shaman is more AoE focused. I think that would be wonderful. That's sort of how Frost Death Knight should be. Two-hand is single target and dual-wield is AoE, but maybe that would make enhancement shaman and, and frost too like similar, but that's how I think it could work. Yeah, you're not wrong, Iron Titan. You're not wrong. But I think if they start the process of Demonology Warlocks thinking differently now, then it'll help in 7-0. Reworking Shadow Priests, I have no idea. The show on Sunday, my interview show, my normal show, is Shadow Priests. Um, we'll think, so we'll talk about Shadow Priests on the show on Sunday. Link a tweet if they plan to do a Q&A. Cool, yeah. I don't know if I like the item upgrade system, Cameron. We're already getting an item upgrade system sort of with the new Legendary Ring, if the data mining is correct. The Legendary Ring can be upgraded three times through a, a long extended quest chain, so. That means I don't, the, I, the Legendary Ring can have plus 45 eye levels over three upgrades over the course of the next couple of, or, or plus 30 or plus 45, I don't know yet. I think it was 15 each eye level upgrade, but I'm not sure. Light Up TV, you are preaching to the choir, my friend. I have wanted to and asked for and hoped for a separation of rule sets for PvP and PvE. And Blizzard says it would be too difficult, but I totally disagree. It might be... It's, it's over. The q and is over, Rocky. Uh, we're wrapping up and talking about things now. I... Uh, I don't know why. It might be difficult for them. But I don't think as a player base, if you know going into PvP... That when you are PvPing and you're in the arena, just have two separate tooltips. Against enemies, against players. If you're a PvPer, you will learn what you do in PvP because you PvP. If you're in arenas, battlegrounds, world PvP against players, again. And if they did that, they say it would make the game too much, too, too much more difficult or convoluted or, or difficult to understand. They hid and removed so many passive spells, effects, things that your class does. And if you don't know what you're doing or how you're getting something a resource or whatever because it's not in your spellbook anymore, you have to go to an outside website and find out what it does. So like why, how is that not more difficult than just saying that in PvP or against players, your mortal strike does X, Y, and Z. Against enemies, your mortal strike does X, Y, and Z. Like, that would solve so many issues with power spike differentiating between the two parts of the game. If they want PvP to feel like a community, they would understand their balance and their hierarchy if everything was balanced around their game. Same thing with PvE. Because so many abilities right now even have, you know, against players, this ability does this. Why doesn't all abilities have that? <laughs> Why? Why? Because now it's difficult, in my opinion, to know, not being a PvPer, to go into PvP and realize that X, Y, and Z don't do the same thing they do in PvE. Because uh, some abilities have different rule sets, but some don't. Why? Just... Why? Why? What's up, Jack? Well, 7 is the next expansion. Yeah. Expansions are always... Next number, XO. Like, we're in 6-0 right now with Warlords. That Holy Priest shout-out, though, Jack. I know, brother. I know, man. I'm way behind in chat right now, obviously, chat. Like, I'm, I'm four or five minutes behind, so just bear with me. Well, one year on the same patch? No. When we get 6.2 uh, 6 in, like, a week or two... We had only been at maximum of eight months since the la since the tier 17 patch opened, if you count High Mall as tier 17, which I do. Eight months, I think, is perfect. Between six and eight months for one, like, major content patch, as long as, like, you get a six to eight month patch, but then, like, three to four months into that patch, like, the halfway point, you get something else. So you get, like, you know, you launch expansion, 
you get a 6-1 with like stuff to do. You get a 6-2 big patch, then you get a little bit more at the end there. I think as long as they do that, six to eight months for a content patch is wonderful. That's why you get like a between a 14 to 18 month expansion with two major patches with two small ones in between. My opinion, anyway. I would love Farallon, but I mean, Farallon could have new dungeons and a new raid and who knows. Yeah, Hesp and Twin Top are here on Sunday for Shadow Priest, yes. Hi, Zero Templar. I'm catching up in chat, so I'm sorry. But see, item upgrades were weird. I'm in the camp of reforging should be a thing, but they're already kind of forcing us to have reforging with the new 60-40, 70-30 stat splits on secondary, secondary stats going into the next patch. If you didn't know, the green stats on gear, so like Mastery Haste on gear now, will have like a 70-30 split. So like, there's obviously an item amount of weight in that secondary stat, and it will be skewed 70% of it to one stat and 30% to the other, or however they break it down. So you'll more and more easily see what gear you should want, because obviously if it's weighted towards your attunement stat, if that's good for your spec, like No Holds Barred, then you'd want that piece of gear. And the smaller secondary is kind of like, eh. So. Now we're gonna have tons of things to talk about on the show. I'm gonna do this little Q&A wrap up here for a little bit longer, but then I have a meeting with my guests for Sunday to go over the meet and greet, so. 6.2 will probably be out the uh, 23rd, 24th. I personally would like June, uh, I mean, July 7th for the patch myself after the holiday weekend nonsense, but I, I think July 7th is too far away, but J June 23rd or June 30th. Yeah. I thought the Q and A was really good. I liked it. Except the recolor question was totally grazed over. Yeah, eight inches. That, that's I don't know if you told me about talking about the whole warlock thing. I think it's totally smart that they are nerfing demonology because demonology is not going to be the same spec in 7.0, and they don't want people to play demonology now. And all of a sudden, it changes drastically, aka maybe a tank spec, and then all of a sudden, everyone's like, "What the shit, dicks?" So like, they're nerfing it now to make warlocks want to play and understand destruction and affliction instead because those will be your two DPS specs. Like, Affliction is really good for multi-dotting, cleaving, and single target. Destruction is good for burst AoE, and even, I guess, overall AoE, Chaos Bolt OP. Hi, Arbiter. PvP specs, like a fourth spec, I don't think would be a good idea, no. Just every ability has different rule sets. No, you're not going to read tooltips in PvP, Allie. I know that. But if you're a PvPer and prefer the PvP side of the game, you will understand and read and figure out what your class does. You'll read a PvP class guide by a prominent PvPer that you like or something like that. Like you'll you'll figure out what your class does in PvP environments. I totally don't think so, though, Superman. I think a PvP rule set and a PvE rule set would help the game tremendously. Tremendously. How many times, as I am a raider, see a patch note and you see nerfs because of PvP implications and that affects PvE rating? Like, that is the biggest problem that has happened over and over and over again. And who 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 was raiding during High Mall? Three Tuesdays in a row, we had hot fixes and changes because of PvE. Did that not affect PvP? Like, uh, yeah, obviously. So, like, it's it's frustrating because when one camp affects the other, it's just really awkward. And if they want to make both camps like their own big microcosms in the game, and you can argue that they've had statistics out before, that, like half of the game plays PvP and half the game PvEs. So why shouldn't the game just be split balanced based on that? It'd be so much more healthy for both sides of the game. You'd know what your class does. 
and you could balance around either or. Like if suddenly Mortal Strike is too powerful against players, they can nerf the player component to Mortal Strike. Because instead of just nerfing warriors in total, which then nerfs warriors in raids. Because what if warriors suck in raids? Now you nerf, you nerf Mortal Strike because it's really bad in PvE, or bad, too bad in PvP, and that affects their already bad situation in PvE. So then they'll like, they'll buff like Deep Wood or some other garbage to help them in PvE. Like, but then it, it dis disproportionately focuses the balance of raiding versus player combat. In my opinion. I mean, let me win. A lot of the classes were simplified going into this expansion. Almost on purpose. They wanted players to fight bosses and not fight your add-ons or fight your your hotbar. That was the entire purpose of, of like these squishes. Not every class got the same treatment. They've said before... Um, the, uh, every class is not created equally, so. I think 13 is good. I would have gone with 12, in my personal opinion, uh, JRL. I would have gone with 12. I think 13 is, like, right there. Right, Radar, right. But won't they add bubbles to say Mystery Verse is enough bubble spec so priests can play the spec they want? I, I think the absorb meta is toxic though, Ari. Overall. And I hope they fix it. Mostly the, the main the main problem with the absorb meta is Power Word Shield. Power Word Shield is the problem. So either make it more like Sacred Shield, make it last less time, make it have a cooldown on the actual spell, rework how weak and soul works. Power word shield is the problem. Not, it, I don't think clarity of will has weird implications of like avoiding certain mechanics. It's a huge shield, but it's a talent. It's a choice. It's a cast time, and you have to plan around using it as the healer. If you're a distant priest and your main job is to like. Power shield, power shield, power shield, power shield, power shield, power shield, prayer of healing, power shield, power shield, power shield, power shield, power shield, penance the tank a little bit, power shield, power shield, power shield, power shield, power shield. Like, what the hell kind of healing metagame is that? But that's how you can be really effective because you're stopping so much incoming damage. But that makes it bad for the other healers. Because if they don't take damage, then your hots don't work. And that's a huge problem in the healing metagame. We just did a Discipline Holy Priest episode last week. It's on YouTube now. That's that's the issue. Power Word Shield is the biggest problem, I think, with the with the Absorb meta. Enhanced with Shaman nerf incoming? No, we got a 0.75% uh, buff. Well, yeah, Hashma, that's fine. But you know how some abilities in World of Warcraft have two different tooltips for PvP and PvE or whatever. But if you just knew that for every ability in your game, in your kit, wouldn't that just be easier? Again, Mr. Make, the, the balancing of certain classes that hinges on PvE and PvP are against each other. If certain classes are really good in PvP, like, or really weak in PvP, they might not see buffs or nerfs because they might be really good in PvE. And if they buff something that happens to them in PvP to make them more viable, it will make them even more viable in PvE. So they're like, they're not exclusive where you can't just buff them individually. If you buff one, it affects the other. It's a, it's a cross niche effect. It's really, mm. It frustrates me to no end. I don't know if they could... That, BC Walker, I, I don't... Why do they need to totally rebuild the code? I, I, that's not, that doesn't make any sense. They already have abilities in the game that have differentiated values against players 
or we're against NPC enemies. They already have it. It's already in the game for like certain cherry picked abilities. So they already can do it. They just need to do it to the rest of the game. Hi, Chicky Peas. I'm doing good. Just rebuttaling and talking about uh, the Q&A. Why would they say false information about an expansion before it would get released? What do you mean? Brian, I don't know what this question what this was referring to. The warlock stuff? I don't think it's false information at all. Power Word Shield shouldn't have a cast time. It should have a cooldown. I think it should have a four second cooldown, in my personal opinion. So you would basically like you could have two spells and then you could shield somebody. I think though that power word shielding should like be a caveat to add on to a spell. Like if you are penancing the tank. You end your penance cast with a powered shield, right? You give them a little bit of boom, 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 and then you shield them, right? That's what you do. Or if someone gets a debuff and they have to dispel the debuff, right? You can either choose to dispel it or just shield the person for the damage and then dispel it or vice versa. Or if you shield them, then the other healer dispels them. They have a buffer for the A, the damage they could have taken from the debuff if it was a damage over time or whatever, or incoming damage from something else, AOE effect, whatever. It's a team oriented thing, but right now, Discipline Priests did the same thing they did in, in Mists of Pandaria, where they just shield spam. And that absorbs so much damage, it hurts other healers. Because they can't get their throughput. Because more healers are throughput in World of Warcraft than uh, absorbing. Only Holy Paladins have a little bit of absorb and Discipline Priests. And obviously one, one ability on Monks. You know you can get rid of problems on your computer if you add butter and salt and put it in the microwave? Really? I'm not, I'm not salty about. I'm just being... Yeah, that 4.5 buff, yeah. Just being conversative. Yeah, Murder of Crows is less damage PvP, for example. Yeah, it's already in the game for so many abilities, but... Eh. Yeah, I think Arbiter's not wrong. Yeah, Hunter Traps too. Well, see, they have some things to make that, that do that already. Like, they have differentiating damage values, but that's the whole argument, is that, say, Obliterate again. Obliterate should have two tooltips on it. Just, like, one in white and one in, like, yellow or something. One in blue and one in red. Who cares? Um, but you make the PvP tooltips show up as the opposite faction's color, so if you're Horde, they show up as blue. Whatever. Obliterate does X, Y, and Z damage against enemies. Enemies could be NPCs. Or, Obliterate does X, Y, and Z damage against a player. So in duels, arenas, battlegrounds, whatever. World PvP. Boom! Right there. So you can balance it around. You know how much HP players have based off of gear. You balance abilities based off of that. And then you also know how much um, balancing has to be done for PvE to make classes competitive around the PvE ladder and how much gear they get and the, the gear values are different and the damage values are different from PvE to PvP. Like trinkets and stuff like that and set bonuses on, on gear. And then you can balance it like that way. That's, that's what I mean. For WoW casting animations. It did used to cost a lot of mana, Chicky Peas. It cost a lot of mana, it had the Rapture effect to it. So you would cast it as a thought that you wanted to make sure that it got the absorb, because it had to be fully absorbed to pop for the Rapture mana back. So you would have to like, not just spam it, because if you spam like 12 shields, only like four or five of them fully absorbed, you only got mana back for those shields and you got a mana loss overall. As far as I remember it anyway. Do you know how enhanced single target performs in compared to other direct damages? Uh, we're pretty crap still, Risen. We're getting a lot of single target love in the next patch because of the trinket, the set bonuses, but we're still, based off of early sim crafting, 
there is about a 15k-ish DPS disparity, if not more like an 18k, from the bottom of the DPS meter on a patchwork fight to the top. Um, and I think enhancement shamans were like 11k below the top on single target. We were like doing 71 to 72,000 DPS on single target before the last balance iterations and the top single target classes, which arguably I think should be having an edge like Feral Druid and Arcane Mage, were like, again, 11,000 DPS above us. So. That's totally different scenario though, Packers. Warlocks are three, Warlocks are a pure DPS class. You have three ways to do ranged DPS. They can't, you can't use that example for enhancement because if they did it with enhancement and force me to go elemental, that's forcing a melee to go ranged. Totally different world, totally different world. You, you can't compare that because you're still a warlock. You still summon demons. You still do ranged damage with buffs and different buttons. They're just making it so that the demonology rotation or play style they are weakening it to a point that they want you to learn and play, maybe appreciate and grow to love, destruction and affliction, because those will be your two DPS specs for doing damage, possibly, in 7.0. I mean, you have to take it how it comes, right? If they want to re-change your class a bit, would you rather them not tell you before the expansion comes out and change things? Or you log in on expansion day, I mean beta and whatnot, and all of a sudden your beloved spec is dead forever because it doesn't exist anymore. It's a different way of putting it, I think. I think softening the blow almost a year in advance, basically, is a lot better than putting it in the beta and be like, oh yeah, Demonology's a tank spec now. It doesn't do much damage, it tanks. So if you play Demonology to do damage before, it's dead. That's it, move on. Like it's a much better, healthier way to do it now than they're doing it if they just like slap it on in the future. Yeah, there's plenty of options that they can do, Renix. I don't know. I just think shields should not absorb full damage. I don't think it's up yet exactly, Praz. I mean, once I go offline, I'll have my version of it. I streamed, I streamed the Q&A in chat and had you guys talking and stuff like that, and then I chatted over some answers and whatnot. Just so chat wasn't an absolute abomination. Shields are overhealing. What is this, Dragon Age? What, my, my, my Zim shirt? Oh my god, the Invader Zim comic is coming back. I'm gonna buy the hell out of those, man. I love Invader Zim. Atonement needs to be a thing. Yes. Cryogenic. I think Disciplined Priest should be an Absorb-based healer, but it should be an Offensive healer. In some way. Like, Atoma right now in endgame rating is worthless, but who knows. Old Enhancement for Enhancement? Old Ascendant, sorry, for Enhancement. Eh, you mean the scale off Mastery? So. Oh, I think Beacon should be removed from the game. Sigh. Well, I think, looks like a Beacon of Light is fine. Beacon of Faith as a talent is too mandatory, too powerful, and needs to be removed from the game. I, I hate Beacon of Faith. I hate it. I hate Beacon of Faith. It is awful. Beacon of Light on one tank and you can move the beacon around? Sure, why not? Whatever. But Beacon of Faith is just... No. Uh, Retribution Paladin? I haven't heard if it's good or not on PTR. I, Retribution Paladin from a rating standpoint is too inconsistent. The only real reason you want to bring a Retribution, Retribution Paladin is if you don't have a Holy or Prot Pally, in my opinion, Almog. Their damage is kind of meh. Um, they're too inconsistent. They're not that good at single target, and their AoE is not something you can plan on. They're getting Band-Aid fixed with the new, like, three charges of wings, so that they can, like, kind of put burst windows in. I mean, it basically also f uh, forces you to um, take, whatchamacallit, um, Sanctified Wrath, because you'll be in wings so often you want to spam um, hammer as often as you can, but. Uh, I don't know, Daniel. 
I, I disagree. Some of the stuff was good, though. I watched it live. I don't know if you were here live watching it. It was some good answers to some things. They definitely answered some, um, some hardballish question, I guess. I think it'd be easy in my opinion, Soul. Uh, if you're talking about the Sims that I've seen, it was stuff that uh, was posted through uh, both Elvine and Purge. We're running some SimCraft stuff. Yeah, you can't just spam Rejuvenation as a Resto Druid, in my opinion. Right? I mean, you can, but you can't. Eh. Yeah, I'm sure this stuff is going to be fixed, yeah. I'm sorry, Fresh Kid. It's good background music when I'm just chit-chatting. That's why I used it. The old Ascended style was that uh, you did nature damage with your attacks and if yeah, with your mastery. I think it's fine as it is now. Uh, that got too powerful. It was too much burst. Right now, a new enhancement is just a 30% armor reduction. So it's a 30% increase in your damage during Ascendance because you ignore armor on bosses, which is, I think, like 30% or something. So... Probably about Warlock is they can't balance it and people like me who love demonology hate the stuff they did to the class. That's that's probably why as a development team, uh, Weedris, they're going to remake it. We don't know that, uh, Cleva. I said that as my option um, because they are nerfing Demo now because they are reworking it in the future. Ian said that much, though, basically that the demonology is getting a rework. I want them changing it, but let us know it's going to change. I don't see why they have so much noise. I don't know, Packers. I mean, overall, Demonology had to be nerfed for Hellfire Citadel because of how prominent um, certain AoE situations are going to be and how good Demonology is at them. So, I, I, I'm not. I'm not saying you're wrong in your mentality here with this. Um, if it's your favorite spec now, and obviously it's getting it's getting toned down. But uh, how big is the nerfs, by the way? Like, is it is it really bad? Obviously, Affliction's going to be super good on almost every single fight in Hellfire, though. So. Warlock discussion soon? Sure. Yeah, definitely coming soon. We only have, like, seven more episodes to do in Warlock. And you can type uh, XM WOD, XMWOD in chat, and you will get a... Um, you will get a... Uh, a pop-up window a, of the um, Google Doc of what classes we've done and what we haven't done yet. So there's only so many classes left. So this week is a Shadow Priest, and next week will most likely be uh, a melee class. Well, it is a melee class, but I haven't said what it is yet until tomorrow. Don't take my beacons. They're my babies. Mm. Double beacon is bad, I think. Was I satisfied with the Q&A? Was there anything you wanted to see addressed that wasn't? Uh, I think it was fine, uh, Mooduck. I think the answer to the recolors was kind of meh, but... I mean, I don't, anything else asked? I don't know. They, they answered some pretty hardball questions, in my opinion. A bit depressing, Kin? It's, I don't think it's depressing. It's like ambient pixel music. Chip Toony. There was no PvP discussion, uh, Miss Traps. There's no PvP discussing at all because it was a, not a PvP interview. Sunday is definitely tomorrow. What's up, Bear? Yeah, Sigh are not wrong. Yeah, Sparkle definitely tanked a lot of stuff in Mop. You're right. Rathlos, it doesn't matter. I don't know if you missed my previous discussion. In, in the grand scheme of things, gear off of Mythic Archimon does not matter. Because once you kill Mythic Archimon, you're on farm. And who gives a shit about farm? Mythic Archimon doesn't matter. Like, in overall gear, like, echelons for raid progression, it doesn't matter because no more progression after Mythic Archimon. And it will really not matter a ton going into the next tier of gear, a tier of raiding, because it might not even happen. There might not be another raid tier, because we're getting expansion in the, you know, early uh, spring of next year, so.
Right, Jack. Yeah, you can't spam renewed to be successful. It had to weave in prayer, healing, binding, heal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But as a disciplined priest, you can literally just spam shield and be fine all day, almost. Yeah. You can spam shield and cascade and be good to go. That's just disciplined priest. The stream is only delayed by about 10 uh, seconds, Miss Traps, but I'm behind in chat because I'm not scrolling all the way down. I'm just behind in chat right now because I want to I wanna miss questions. How's Elemental looking on PTR? Uh, Elemental, I think we just did an Elemental Shaman interview uh, one episode before we go with Binkenstein and, um, and uh, 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 Tech. You can go back and watch the episode for Elemental Shaman. We talk a lot about Tier 18. But I think it's fine. It's not going to be like the best range DPS class of the game, and it's not going to be the worst. It's just kind of in the middle of the pack. I'd rather be in the middle of the pack than the bottom of the pack, though, to be honest with you, so. Yeah, my normal chat delay is about 10 to 13 seconds, but I am delayed in, in actual chat because you're looking at my timestamps here. You're about four minutes behind because I'm going through all the questions, so. I don't know if Shadow Priest will get a complete overhaul. I personally think a ranged class with combo points is in hell incredibly boring. I mean, we're talking about Shadow Priest on Sun on the episode tomorrow. We'll talk about the possible rework idea or if there are options for it. I mean, because it's sort of Shadow Priest is a different version of Affliction Warlock, basically. I don't really know if they're gonna do a whole lot of class spec reworks in 7.0. They could, who knows? But I think it needs um, some love, I guess. But I, I don't know. We'll have to ask the mo more better, more, more better, mo better, mo better shadow priests tomorrow. I don't remember, uh, Cliva, uh, Cleva, Cliva. Um, I don't remember where sub rogues were. I mean, sub rogues. I don't think we're top DPS anymore. I'm pretty sure assassination was the better rogue spec for single target. But I could be wrong. I don't know yet. I don't, I don't know what I'm going to do yet with Lexi. I have other mage guests. Don't worry about that. Do you think they push healers too much already into too good level 100 with no choice talents? Well, the issue is they have said before, I interviewed Blizzard a couple of months back, and Chris Zerhut, the lead class designer, one of the lead class designers was on the show. And they, he had admitted to the fact that level 100 talents were not interchangeably balanced better with each other. And that's totally true, and it's still true. The new talent system, whereas it might think you have more choice, you kind of have less choice. I will be not moving around my talents as much in tier 18, but I believe other classes might. So, but... I don't know if they push healers too much into already way too good level 100 choices. My issue is they're never going to nerf the really good choices for level 100 talents. They'll just buff the other ones. You might not be wrong there, Chicky Peas. Who knows? Like, what if Rogue got a ranged spec and Hunter's got a melee spec? Like a, ro a, a ranged rogue spec, like throwing daggers and shurikens the whole time, building up combo points from range and using ranged finishers, throwing vials of poison on targets, and then hunters being in melee range with their pet, you know, fighting side by side with your pet in melee range. Could happen. Yeah, we'll do the enhancement show eventually. XO. Again, there's only like, after this Sunday, there are six episodes left. We'll get to all classes and specs, but there's like 30 plus episodes to do. So, it's just we only do one episode a Sunday, and that was a Sunday I was out of town, and then I came back and I got sick. So we, we missed two Sundays in a row, basically, so I got pushed back a bit. It's not Sunday here yet, though, gal. Gal, ga is it gal gon gal gon -a gal gon -a I'm ruining names, it's fine. I mean, Icy Veins and Summon Stone have really good class guides. Yeah, Summon Stone and Icy Veins. I mean, the, the TJ... Uh, uh, 
overall, the game doesn't feel very savage because stuff dies super fast. Um, I mean, even like rare mobs aren't even that big of a deal. And at a certain gear level, even the rare elite mobs in the daily areas also get totally dumpstered anyway. So I don't know if Blizzard's ever going to go back to the fact that like you could bump into mobs in the world that will just kill you and stuff. I don't think it's going to happen. I think they want the open world accessible with certain pockets of group-oriented content on purpose. So, I don't really ever think they're going to go back to that, where you like bump into a mob that just crushes you in the real world. Unless it's important to this the, the zone you're in, like the Fell Reaver and crap like that. How do you know they're going to get an expansion in early 2016? Well, because the movie comes out? Is it, is it Rokaz? Because the movie comes out. And because Blizzard doesn't want to do uh, two-year expansions anymore. And because... Um, I'm not going to start back over Swayze. Um, yeah. I think. Yeah. Pretty sure we'll get an expansion uh, right around the time the movie comes out next year. Just makes sense. They can tack on so much marketing... So much marketing can be tacked on to the movie coming out. They're not going to talk about a single class, though, on the Q&A light up. That's, that's, they're not going to, at least it's a class that needs to have some real big discussion. Warriors are in a weird spot right now, but you can still play Arms and Fury Warrior, even though they're both kind of, eh. They talked about Demonology Warlocks because the possibility in the future where they are changing the class. It's called Bay Delay? Yeah. I mean, I'm just, I don't want to just scroll down through chat and just ignore people's questions. So, I mean, I'm only 10 seconds or so behind from when I read questions, but. <clears throat> There's a lot of issues with the different types of talent combinations. In, in my opinion, if I had my way, one of my, like, if I designed World of Warcraft, like one of my if I designed WoW options would be that talent trees are more geared toward the actual spec you are. So if you're a prot warrior, which was the two episodes ago we talked about protection warriors, I'm a prot warrior, I'm a tank. Why are like four of my options all just DPS options? Like, if you're a tank, most of your talent choices should be about tanking, right? Obviously, there could be a couple of DPS options in there. Maybe your 100 talents are still like, you know, Ravager and whatever. But if you're a healer, your choices are healer-oriented, right? If you're a DPS, they should be DPS-oriented. That's like the movement or utility tiers or whatever. And if you're a tank, they should be tanking-oriented. A lot of the, and even, even further, I think a lot of the talent trees should really change around a lot based on what spec you're playing. Some classes and specs have that. Like, some of the talents, like, actually like, change something else when you're a different spec. But I think they're just barely, like, scraping the cusp of how talentable it could be if they really dug in there and gave you lots of different choices for different talents based on the class or spec you're playing. And not just as simple as it is currently. Like, it, it's a little bit meh. It's frustrating to look at. Like, I do a lot of these class interviews. I did all of them in MOP, obviously, and we're almost done with Warlords, and I see this a lot. Oh, Stagger needs to get looked at heavy, Bear. Stagger is way too abusable. Way too good, man. I don't think any reworks are confirmed outside of what Ian just said, that Demonology Warlock is getting a rework. But from, again, my little birds, I believe that 7.0 is going to bring a lot of class and spec design changes, I think. I hope. I think and I hope. So... Yeah, who knows? Shingara.
Well, I mean, I'll be talking. I'll be talking a lot about enhancement talent stuff on this live stream, of course, um, Uthril. But I mean, like when we get to the, the actual episode for enhancement shaman, it'll be during 6.2. So, and then of course, a lot of the classes we talked about way back early in High Mall. I have plans to do tier 18 like catch up videos and interviews on the show. So like I'll do like a range deep. I'll do two of each. I'm thinking two range, two melee, two healer and two tank, where I'll bring on between two and three guests of said class and or spec. I can't cover all of them in this fashion, but hopefully I'll cover enough of them where we can see like what's changed for Shadow Priest in tier 18. Um, you know, what's changed for Rogue, what's changed for Warrior, what's changed for, you know, Brewmaster Monk, like that kind of stuff. I, I plan to do catch up interviews in tier 18. I plan to do eight of them in total over the course of the uh, raid. So, obviously, we have six left now, seven including uh, tomorrow, and then then I'll want to do the catch-up videos as well, which I'll have on, like, one rogue and one warrior and one, I don't know, one feral druid or something like that, you know? And we'll I'll just throw questions at each of these guests, the two or three of them they bring on, to talk about what's happening in Tier 18, how the class has changed, so that kind of stuff. So, we'll, we'll also have Tier 18 catch-up coverage as well as... I mean, all the rest of the classes in Warlords, of course. But as we've gotten more closer to Tier 18, we talk about Tier 18 more, so... Best range DPS in 6.2? No idea. Marksman Hunters and Arcane Mages are super strong on single target. Then that changes to, like, Beast Mastery and stuff like that on different fights, so... We don't really know yet because they're still changing stuff. J is it J, J Lay? Or JJ the Lee Tube. I can't remember. I have no idea. Tanning lotion and becoming president of your local. I don't. Probably not. What? Any idea who you're gonna have on for warlocks? I have no idea yet. Right now, Kevin. I've sent out some early feelers for warlock guests, but it will take a while. Warlocks will definitely be a couple weeks from now. I mean, what I think is we'll get uh, announcement. I think we'll also get... I, I want to get the expansion announcement before BlizzCon, but we'll probably get it at BlizzCon. Then we might get, like, playable beta. I don't, but see, I don't know, Packer. See, I don't, also don't know how bad it's going to be in the first place and, like, how it will impact Mythic rating. Like, cause I don't think, again, this might come down to, like, me kind of sounding like a bitch, but, or being bitchy. If you're not playing at, like, a top 10 world racing guild, it might not really matter what your class respect is. It doesn't. Unless you are pushing the upper echelons of bleeding hardcore difficulty, and you're under-geared for the difficulty of progression that you're currently pushing, it doesn't really matter what class or spec you play. I really doubt it. The top, top guilds won't use X and Y and Z class because it's just weaker, but unless you're one of those guilds, I don't know if it's going to be a huge difference. So... Uh, I mean, I, I'm not going to speak about any other podcast for World of Warcraft. Everyone's got their own different show and whatnot. I just try to do what I do. Uh, I can't... Just just, just just could. I have no idea. I don't think we're ever going to see the older talent system. Tessac? No, no way. So you're saying more classes should get the Guardian Feral split treatment. I... Yes, Daniel. Yeah. I, be I think so, yeah. I do. Like, Gladiator Warrior should be its own talent tree. Protection Warrior should get protection-oriented and tanking talents. Overall strong specs, I mean, it's up in the air still. They're still balancing things. So, like, Marksman Hunter is, like, the new OP on single target without need for burst. Beast Mastery's still good. So, 
Arcane Mage is great on single target. Fire Mage is great on AoE or multi-target. I mean, Assassination Rogue, I think, is going to be super powerful, as far as I know. Enhancement Shaman, Arms Warrior, Unholy Death Knight. I think, actually, Frost Dual Death Knight is better for AoE in small burst windows. And Unholy Necroblight De DK is better for spread out slow AoE. You know, so... Prop Paladin fine at the moment. Prop, Prop Paladin probably the weakest tank, or one of the weakest tanks going into the next patch. The next patch, you're going to see Brewmaster, Guardian Druid, and Warrior at the top, most likely, with Blood somewhere in there, and then Prop Paladin being pretty low. Prop Paladins are super risk-reward because their windows of high damage can get you killed. So... Looking at garrisons going forward, would you prefer a guild garrison or another major? I would, guild garrisons. I don't know if any of you in chat play Star Wars or the Republic, but in Sotor, you as a guild creates your own fragon spaceship. You can customize it with achievements. You can put different rooms in it, different like waypoints. You can like park your own little ships in your guild ship. Like in World of Warcraft, there's no like guild oriented building thing yet. And obviously there's no guild, there's no player or guild housing either, because if anyone in chat plays Wildstar or Rift, like those housing gameplay elements destroy World of Warcraft. So World of Warcraft needs more, less power gain incentivizing and more player interaction, world exploration, guild involving stuff. Where you just want to do it because it's fun. You want to do it because you're with your friends. You don't want to do it because it's a fucking carrot giving you raid power. Like, that's the big problem of World of Warcraft, I think, right now. Is everything is about power gains. And that's been propagated since Wrath. The game needs just... You want to play it and do things and unlock things and find things and have cosmetic upgrades or ulterior character progression that's only purely, like cosmetic again because you just want to do it not because you're almost like well that's more dps a lot of order warcraft is like that and you can counter argue like they gave us new mounts all the mounts are like recolored or reskinned things that are the exact same thing you can already get a different color of and i think that's really bad Additionally, there are six new mounts added in World of Warcraft and World of Draenor. Three of them are reskinned old skeletons that don't actually work really well with the reskin of the mount currently, and it's really annoying. Like, the, the pigs. The pig mounts are awful. They're awful. They're the old Direhorn mounts. Direhorns look great, pigs look really bad. There are three bad mounts and three good mounts. The whole expansion is like that. For every, like, good thing, there's a bad thing, and you can immediately point it out. Like, raiding for, like, a fight-to-fight -fight basis outside of Mythic Blackhand, raiding has been good. Raid balance has been really bad. Like, there is a teeter-totter to everything in this game right now, and it's very, very frustrating. More, Maybe I'm just frustrated with it because I, I get a lot of interior feedback. I interview lots of players that have the same thing, so I, like, I sort of sponge it all up. But that's what I think anyway. It's a frustrating thing. I mean, I went out to LA to the launch event. I made a video at the launch event in LA, right? I was super excited for World of Draenor. It was great for like the first four weeks. And then all I do is raid and AFK right click stuff in my garrison. So it's, there's not a lot of things to do in the game. Sorry, that's the wrong quote. There are um, things to do, but not a lot of stuff to do. So what do you think about saying that the Unleash spell are probably going to cut for Shaman? Oh, I think I think Unleash the spell is terrible, Daniel. I think Unleash Fury should be the entire spell. So you get all those effects when you take Unleashed Fury, the talent. But if you don't have that talent, you don't have that stupid other button to hit. Personally. I also really didn't want uh, Frost Shock to do damage when they redid Enhanced Shaman. I wanted it to be a filler spell that did no damage and only applied... Uh, um, it was for, uh, what's it called? For utility. But it's a filler spell now, and I rarely even hit it, but it, it makes sense. I, I hit it even less in the next tier, because I'm basically a button, lightning bolt, button, lightning bolt, button, lightning bolt rotation. 
so. Uh, require planning or effort is an argumentative point, TJ, because, I mean, are you done with mythic progression? Was it easy? There are obviously hard parts of the game that require much planning and effort. I guess outside of that, again, it goes back to my previous statement, that there's nothing to do in the game that feels just fun to do, that you have to, like, do because you wanted to have fun. Yep, the catch-up coverage. Uh, no. No, Mr. Guitar Man, no. Um, the gold nerfs and stuff are because people are just farming gold. Uh, like, possibly, I guess. To have tokens on the AH to buy, though, people still have to buy the tokens. So it's still a win-win for Blizzard. If players have more gold to buy tokens, then other people will be uh, pushed into buying more tokens to get gold. Like, it's, it's a good circle for Blizzard. It's fine. But the, the, the gold, the nerfs to the garrison gold income are because people just farm 7 to 12 garrisons for gold and it trivializes the gold the gold game, I guess and it also trivializes professions because less people are buying and making and selling profession oriented things, that's also circular logic because professions were trivialized in Warlords as well, so that's a cross argument issue Enhanced Shamans will definitely happen, Chris there's only seven episodes left of Warlords before the catch-up episode, so I can't tell you what Sunday it is, but it'll happen eventually. You can follow us on social media, of course, on Facebook and Twitter, and you guys will know when it happens. I mean, Shadow Priest is in a weird spot. I think Holy Priest is fine. Like, if you do not bring a Discipline Priest to your raid and bring, like, a Holy Priest instead, it's fine. It's just, you can do more with the Discipline Priest at high-end rating. You're not gonna do 25k DPS as Demonology and 50 or 60k as Affliction. I don't think it's that big of a disparity. I'm sure there is a disparity that's gonna happen, Packers, but I don't think it'd be that big of a deal. I don't know, though. I haven't done simulation crafting if Demonology is that nerfed. I, I can't imagine it's that nerfed. It's possible. But I would say that it's probably going to have a disparity enough that will discourage top, top guilds from using it. But if, if, if you're a really good Demonology Warlock in a guild that's not super, super duper competitive and you're just, like, crushing heroics and starting a mythic progression, but you're still an absolute ball-out-of-control Demonology Warlock, you might still beat a lot of your fellow raiders if they're not, like, balling out of control X, Y, and Z class. Not to be rude, but that's the that's the that's how it works. Not everyone at this game is as good as the next person. I mean, I suck at this game. I say it all the time. Like, I try to get good rankings and stuff, but it all comes down to like where your guild is at too. So if you're not like pushing yourself, at least depending on how your whole guild works, you could still be amazing in your guild's perspective. If you suddenly play demonology in your guild and you're doing like tank DPS, then yeah, the spec is dead. But if you're not doing tank DPS, then you're probably fine. I think. Maybe? Possibly? I don't know. The guild, guild garrisons, in my opinion, would not really be controlled. It's just centralized. And you can all contribute things to the guild garrison. Obviously, if there are guild garrison controls and, like, things, then you could... Obviously, the GM would control it. Maybe he could give he can give controls to officers too. Not too hard to build into the guild interface panel thing. Yeah, Swartor has guild ships and player housing. Correct. Correct. And the player housing in Swotor is just as customizable. It's not as customizable as Terra and Wildstar, but it's pretty damn up there, man. I mean, Wildstar player housing, I think, is the best player housing in any MMO right now, mostly because of the voxel-based building system, where you can pretty much build whatever the shit you want. You can go out in the world and you can, like, build blocks of things based off, like, breaking down other things of, like, that color or style or whatever profession material, and make anything you want in the Wildstar housing system. Like, the early on Wildstar's launch, some guy made, like, a grand piano. There's a YouTube video, but you can go look at it. 
and the Grand Piano A doesn't exist in the game to make a prefab of it, and B was put together by like linking all these little voxel pieces together and like constructing this thing and then plopping it down. Like some guy made like a skate park in his Wildstar house. Like a full-fledged like half-pipe, full-pipe skating rink for your hoverboard. Little hoverboard mount that you have. Like, can you do that in World of Warcraft? No. There are like theme parks being made in Rift's housing. We have like actual almost roller coasters with the minecart system or whatever the hell it is. I forgot, I saw videos of it. So like, yeah. It's just weird. Garrison's hit good notes, but also really bad ones. Like, I think the biggest fault of Garrison's, I believe, is the art style. That it's only orc and only human is rather frustrating. If, honestly, it's a lot of art. And the art of the Garrison's looks wonderful, but if... If they were able to launch with, you know, Torin, Troll, Human, Gnome, Night Elf, Blood Elf, Pandaren building styles, I think that would have helped a lot of issues with people's customization of their garrison. Because if you go to your friend's garrison to like do an invasion, they might have different buildings, different spots, but everything's the same. It's like, oh, your barracks is there instead of over there, like where mine is. That's the only big difference. All the all the um, tertiary buildings also being in set spots, I also think is kind of bad. Like, because your garrison is like the exact same as everyone else's garrison. And it ruins the RPG, like, disbelief suspension because everything's the same. I went into my friend Swotor Galactic Stronghold. He built a casino that is covered in pictures of the first boss, Rancor, which we call Steve, affectionately. And the entire wall is wallpaper with pictures of Steve. Larger ones, small ones, huge poster-sized Steve pictures. And he had to go out, farm, and build every single picture of Steve. And it's hilarious. It's the Steve Casino, and it's so much fun. There's, like, no customization in that in Warlords. There's nothing you can make to feel like your own. You can change your banner and your guards. Eh. I would love more characters of the content. Well, that, that comes down to the RPG element of the game. Like, after you've stopped leveling a little bit, do you still feel like a shaman? Are you still doing shaman things? Are you still doing warlock things? Like, the Green Fire quest is what it was, and it was amazing. Same thing with like, the Rogue Legendary quest. Amazing stuff. But then after you do these incredibly small bits of content... Where do you still feel like your class anymore? But that's an RPG argument that's probably dead. World of Warcraft is more of a massively multiplayer online action adventure game, not a RPG anymore. An RPG is like Dragon Age, Witcher 3, Mass Effect. Those are RPGs. Um, Pillars of Eternity, RPGs. WoW is sort of not RPG-ish anymore. SWOTOR. SWOTOR is an RPG, though. Like, holy crap, that's an MMORPG. My god. But that's Bioware. It's a different company. Yes, druids need new skins. They need new bear, cat, boomkin, tree... Tr the, tra tree form is probably okay. But bear, cat, boomkin, definitely. Bear, cat, boomkin. The boomkin model you're using is the same one from Beta World of Warcraft. It's like 12 years old. But they've, they've said that before. They want to make new models for druid forms. That's just art, and it takes a while. I don't know how big their art team is at Blizzard for World of Warcraft. I would not assume more than maybe 10 to 12 people. I can't imagine more than that. Um, Stormstrike while in Ascendance? Well, what do you mean? Well, Velk, we have the, uh, the Forced Lightning now. It's not, a, not We had Forced Lightning, which I thought was a wonderful. We throw, like, the new little, like, air discs now. The little wind strike, like, swoop, 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 like, the air farts. I think it looks awful. Why couldn't they just leave us the lightning, but just make it have the new effect where it just ignores armor? Because, like, the lightning attack looked wonderful. I think it looked great. Like, the, like the quad chain lightning out of our hands. But... There's no explanation for why they're not. Uh, just time, I guess? Kai? I guess just time. The look of the Shaman Tier 18, I think it looks fine. Looks good. 
I might not transmog it for very long, but it looks good. I like the fell version more than the normal version of the tier 18 shaman set. Uh, I think garrisons should have been faction and server based myself. Uh, is it Hirkel? Hirkel. Hirkel! Are you a Viking? Like, you make your garrison on your main, and then all your alts can go there too. But garrisons are also an integral part of the leveling process that got retooled, so. So, yeah. Like the beard? Appreciate that. It's something. I don't know. It's, it's what it is on my face. We'll go for like another 10 more minutes. I have to talk to my guests for tomorrow. I'm gonna try to catch up with the chat. Holy priests don't suck. Holy priests are totally fine. The random fairy dragon that spawns with the Moonkin set is totally adorable and does way too much effing damage. They have to rebalance that thing. Those fairy dragons do tons of damage. Like, is this League of Legends in my World of Warcraft? Episode after Shadow Priest will be a melee DPS. The next six episodes, so it goes range DPS tomorrow, then it'll go, based off scheduling, hopefully it'll go melee ranged, melee ranged, melee ranged. Because we have six episodes left. You can type exclam WOD in chat, and you will get a list of all the classes we have done, and what episode they are, and who the guests were, as well as what ones we have not done yet. So you'll know that those are the ones that are coming up. And of course, if you want to know the classes that are coming up next, or inter interact with us during the after show, you can just follow us on Twitter at Final Boss TV. Links down below the stream. Um, I'm more active on Twitter than Facebook, but Facebook still exists too if you don't like Twitter. Fix PvP. Don't get banned now. The Wildstar Skate Park? Yeah, holy crap, you found the video packers? That's epic, dude. That's it's crazy. Why the Alliance Garrison has the fourth small building? Uh, it's just, it's not alley. It's just art. It's just art. It's just the empty spot because it looks neat. It's just an empty space. They have more building material. It's just for art. There's no, no plan for it. The, Blizzard did say that they plan to have garrisons go to level four, possibly. So we could see the extra content patch after this next one, like 6.3 have like the next evolution of garrison. Maybe they'll fix some garrison problems, but I I think I remember them saying that they are gonna go to level four garrison in the future if they could do it. Can you take us to the Steve Casino on stream sometime? Maybe be Halia. Yeah, I'll have to ask my friend Corey. The next class after Shadow Priest is a melee DPS class and I will let you know what class it is at the end of the episode. I never tell you what the next episode coming up is until the end of the current one. So you'll find out You'll find out which episode's coming up on the end of the next episode tomorrow. They didn't really touch on warriors specifically, Fog, no. <gasps> Hi, Chad! Where are all the blame Celestial? I'm behind in chat right now, Chad, I'm sorry. I'm not, I don't want to skip people's questions, so I'm like three to four minutes behind in actual chat, like reading the chat room. My delay is only like 10 seconds normally, but I'm not wanting to skip questions and give opinions on things and stuff that I know. But hi, Chad. How much uh, ketchup have you had today, by the way? A bottle and a half? I hope a bottle and a half, right? Yeah. Hi, Chad. We have air-based destructo discs. It's not that cool looking. I wish the old, like, quad chain lightning was still what Windstrike looked like. But it doesn't happen. They didn't confirm when 6.2 is coming out. I would, um, I would still assume the 23rd of uh, June. I personally would like July 7th, but, but uh, yeah, I think July 7th would be great. Right after the holiday weekend, wouldn't have to worry about like trying to play a lot of World of Warcraft during the holiday, you know, because different people celebrate like July 4th stuff differently in larger, smaller quantities. So, what do you think it could happen if WoW goes longer than three plus years? That won't happen, Proto. I mean, I also have no issue with expansions lasting longer periods of time, but we would still need to have large content patches every six to eight months, as well as small content patches between each major. Don't say what, Nikolai. Pfft, I, what's Chad gonna do? 
Celestalon lurks enough, and I think through the course of the show and through his uh, his lurking, we definitely have maybe fixed a couple things or problems with um, the game. I'm not going to name things specifically. I will say that I will take credit for getting the healing, tanking, and damage dealing damage target dummies in your garrisons, though. That was that's for me, baby, right here. The tanking one is still too close to the damage one, and it gets in combat with you, and you're in combat forever. And it also like one shots you if you get too close. That could like move them a little bit, but like that's that's where's my camera? But yeah, that's that's for me. I will take that's. Uh, best Hui 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 NA Guardian Druids are gonna be wicked good in 6.2. Like they might be, like, it might be like Guardian Druid Brewmaster, like the top two tanks. We'll see. Uh, Baloney, what the hell? Discussed game design, watched Watchers Q and A, applied to a new raiding guild, stopped by here. <gasps> applied to a new raiding guild. What's up, David? Plenty of people care about PvP. No reason to be a troll. I think I answered your question already, though, Fog. They didn't, they, they didn't like, answer questions. Yeah, from four minutes ago. I'll try to catch up. I'm trying to catch up. Don't worry. I'm getting there. Oh, man. Lurker Joan. Have some frost morns. It's from, like, four minutes ago, I'm sure. But thank you so much for the seven continued months of support, Lurker. Much love. Appreciate that, man. I don't play a warrior DPS, so I can't complain about things. Obviously, there are issues with the fact that, like, Blizzard has gone back and forth on AoE spells being integral to single target rotations. Because, like, you whirlwind for filler on single target as arms were, and that feels kind of lame. Uh, and the procy nature of Fury is very frustrating, kind of like how Retribution Paladins feel like they're not in control of their class. So I think with the new... The new Two-hand frost death knight is gonna be an absolute kerfuffle. What was that derp, Arakai? What is that tweet? What? What was I doing? Was I reading chat? Going like uh, at something? It's terrible. Just the worst. That's my face though. Yeah, the storm blast animation. Just hey, Chad, can we get the uh the little like air discs? The swooshy swooshy is removed from Enhancement Shop and just give us back our quad chain lightning for uh, wind strike. Thanks. Like, it doesn't feel very powerful when you turn into this giant ascended elemental or with a new glyph in the patch, you, like, become elementally infused and then you just throw little, like, air discuses. You're like, eh. Like, ascending and blasting out, like, four chain lightnings from both weapon. That's where it's at, baby. Oh, thanks. Ch the placement of the garrison target dummies is intentional so that they get to kill me. Okay, Chad. I'm, I'm picking up what you're putting down. All right. I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. No, just, just Chad. Even though I made him that special shirt. That special shirt, though. I gotta scroll down real quick. I'm almost caught up, man. I'm almost caught up. This is crazy. Hi, Mr. Canoe. I'm catching up, yeah. So what do you still enjoy in World of Warcraft besides raiding stuff? I mean, I play World of Warcraft because I like the people I'm in my guild with and because I've made it sort of a job for me. And, um... I mean... I don't know. I haven't... I looked through my achievement window and like I ha there's a lot of, like, those world-oriented, like, Draenor achievements that I haven't done yet that I used to do, like, in, in Mr. Pandaria, in the interim between expansions, I went back and, did, like, did, like, all the world treasure-finding achievements and crap like that. So I'll do that again. 
So maybe I'll have fun doing that, but like, I, I play World of Warcraft to raid, I guess. There's I, there's not a whole lot to do, in my opinion. In my, I don't pet battle. I don't PvP. So, I don't mount collect. World of Warcraft for me is very pinpointed on what I do in the game. And if I want to find other things to do, I do other games, I guess. The Chad's nice name is Thundercock? Uh, uh, Paladin, uh, Ian said that he would love to make like some forum posts and maybe compile some of the question answers from questions they couldn't get to. They only do like an hour-ish of these Q&As, so obviously you could only do so many. But I was super surprised, actually. Some of those questions are pretty hardballed. Some pretty hardballed questions, I believe. And they put all the flying stuff at the beginning to get out of the way. I was still in the camp of, like, I don't care if we didn't get flying back or not in Warlords. But I'm also in the counter-argument that, like, there's not a tons of incentives to, like, go out in World of Warcraft and do things in the world. And I think flying would help if there was content. So, to do in the world. You're probably already gone, though, Chad, but thanks for stopping by, buddy. Have fun at work and stuff. Hope your vacation was good, man. Hopefully I'll bump into you in a restroom at uh, BlizzCon this year again. That was so funny last year. How is Monk in 6.2? Brewmaster is super strong. Windwalker is in a weird spot. I've heard it's like, eh. Um, and um, Mistweaver is good. Mistweaver is fine. Yeah, I play SWOTOR. I played a lot of SWOTOR. I'm a founder for SWOTOR, actually. I have streamed and played some of it on stream recently. I resubscribed to play the new content. I'm currently leveling again. I'm level 57 or whatever. I'm a couple levels from the cap now. So, I'll definitely stream some more in the future. I'm only, like, really leveling and doing, like, the story campaign stuff. So, we'll see. 6.2 flying is fine. I think they listened to the community and really... They didn't, like flip-flop they amended their decision because of the community response which i think is a positive thing for a game developer to do and tying it to a huge the huge the, the the weird thing about flying is that you're tying it to a huge meta achievement that means like you do all the content in the game that's when it comes out and then you can fly but like where do you take your flying so it sort of helps for ults like, it'll make the initial alt garrison resource grind easier because you can just do all the flying things in the grand and get all the, the resources, but that's about all it really does. So, I think it's just fine. It'll be interesting to see the world from the from, from the air. I, I still want them to put in content that is, because you have flying, you can do this. You know what I mean? Like, because you have flying, you can go to the new elemental plateau. Or... Because you have flying, you can go to, you know, Farallon's upper crest or ridge or some crap. Like, a reason to have flying gives you this. That's why I originally said for the longest time is they need to give you something that interacts with flying. Not just like, here's flying again. Uh, they're adding a whole new area to Ashran. There's also some rebalancing coming in with Ashran that's supposed to really help the Ashran push and pull. And make people actually want to beat Ashran in a in a actual meaningful fashion. So, but also I think some of the Ashran fixes are like forcing you to do Ashran if you're PvPing. But if they make it better, then it should be good. Um, I don't know about that. Uh, is it is it Zayok? I don't know about that. You can always tweet me in the after show and ask us, but we'll see. Ah, uh, yeah, whichever. Yeah, Hesp and Twin Top are on tomorrow. Oh, I really gotta catch up with the chat and get out of here. Yeah, that, that's not, you're not wrong, Fog. It's sort of a throwback. Um, it's sort of more like the Isle of Quelled the NOS out the unlocking mechanic, I think. I 
I have not played any XIV, Lester, but some of my friends are playing XIV and I'm like, I want to. I don't have time. Beautiful game, though. Uh, well, well, Mike, I mean, it depends on what server you're playing on. There's plenty of people still playing SWOTOR, but. But yeah. I can't grow a mustache. It doesn't actually, like, work. It doesn't, like, grow. Don't be ridiculous about what? Three D air mounted PvP would be a beast. But see you later, wait, wait, wait. Thanks for stopping by. Holy Paladins will be great. I don't know. Uh, uh, that's a weird question. Uh, Masulas, Masul, Sa, Salsa. I mean, Holy Paladins are almost mandatory for endgame rating. Double bacon on both of your tanks. Like, it's super good. It's, like, almost required for raiding. So. Yep. What are you doing, Arakai? It's terrible. Catching me talking between words make derp faces. But yeah, that'll be fine. Oh, absolutely, Picalia. Absolutely. I'm probably gonna put this whole thing on YouTube in two parts, possibly. We'll see. Our blood decay in 6.2? Fine, middle of the pack. Not bad, not good. They're, they're fine. Depends on the fight, I suppose. I think the only weakest tank will be uh, Protection Paladin going into 6.2. Have not seen Jurassic World yet. Probably gonna see it tomorrow after the show. I may go see it tonight, I'm not sure. I may go out to get food and then go see Jurassic World. I don't know yet. I still have two meetings to do after this, so... StarCraft 3 is not real. Uh, Legacy of the Void is coming out soon, though, which is the last... Um, Expansion for Starcraft 2. Have I caught up yet? I'm almost caught up. Retribution Paladins just don't have a... Uh, kingy, they don't have a goal or a focus. They're not... Their kit is too RNG-oriented to be good at AoE or single target. You can spec for single target, but then because of how RNG the, the class is, you don't actually really do well at single target. So they need to reevaluate the... The goal of what kind of damage Retribution should focus on. If they are a single target class, or if they are a cleaving class, or they're an AoE class. Like, I am a single target burst class and an AoE class as enhancement. There are four types of, like, echelons of damage in the game. So, they kind of have to balance classes around sort of their strengths and weaknesses, I think. I mean, this comes down to the action MMO discussion smugglers, kind of like Terra or Wildstar has like movement based mechanical things, or probably more Terra than Wildstar. Wildstar is like baby mode Terra. Um, possibly, I don't know, that would require incredible game engine updates. So, but WoW is a tab target based action queue system combat system, whereas like Terra. Or Wildstar, in a more baby sense, is a, a live action combat system. And and fights work that way a little better. But, I mean, more 3D oriented movements and encounter drive to stuff, I think it would be tough to imagine them actually doing it. At least, they're not going to do it until expansion, so. It's a cool idea, though. That'd be cool. Well, class and specs will not be great. I mean, I'm unreally sure, Sean. There's sort of a lot of speculation right now, and simulation craft isn't perfect, and obviously classes are not balanced, like, final light, finitely yet. So... I can't answer that question, really. Bonnie got off the Steam flash sales this week. Uh, the Homeworld... Um... Remastered Collection because uh, Homeworld's amazing, and the remaster of the game is, like, super good. May play some on stream one night. We'll see. Yeah, but that's the Homeworld uh, expansion. I also picked up um, Life is Strange, but I won't be playing Life is Strange on stream until all the episodes are out. Same thing with uh, Game of Thrones. I'll play Game of Thrones and Life is Strange on the broadcast once they're, all the episodes are launched, like, once they're all out. 
You'll see them on stream. But I'm not going to play them when they're unfinished right now. I just don't want to. Of course, what you're doing, Arakai. Damn it. Boomkins are fine. Boomkins are going to be great on more than half the fights. Yeah, Wings of Liberty and Hearthstone are really cheap right now, yeah. I probably will. I don't think I can put the... Act I'll, I'll see. I don't want to get in trouble by putting the, the restream of the Q&A on YouTube, but I wonder if it'll really matter. Probably be a good thing for them because it probably gets out more video coverage of the whole thing. Well, Velcan, I've been on Twitch for over three years, so I'm really big on chat interaction and building a community on Final Boss TV. So I take a lot of time to read comments and things. So I don't always get time to, but... Masulsa. Masulsa. Nothing to do with salsa. I know. I'm just I'm, I'm just making fun. It's fine. So, ma, masulsa. Gotcha. I probably won't remember. I might ruin it a couple more times, but we'll get there. When do they got a buff shaman? I mean, like, they're not, I suppose. They got a small buff in uh, 6.2. Favorite MMO to play other than World of Warcraft? Well, because I have not played any Final Fantasy XIV... I can't comment on that one. I'm sure I might love that game. I always said that if I didn't play a lot of WoW, I'd play a lot more SWOTOR. There's only two MMOs I even play is WoW and SWOTOR anyway. But I would love to check out XIV, but don't have time. Vanilla servers are a thing that uh, Lore actually talked about on the latest Don't Get Your Hopes Up or the past one latest Don't Get Your Hopes Up, which is podcast with Mike B, a.k.a. Phony. Vanilla servers would be cool, but they would have to divert design time to rebuilding a dedicated server for that and also reconstructing all of those old, the old game design for Vanilla World of Warcraft in the new cask system. So I don't think we'll ever see it though. It could, but not now. And if you really want a vanilla, a vanilla, um, Wow, system, there are ways to do that, technically. I have friends that play on them, actually. They say it's pretty cool. The game is so different back then. Being carried by trinkets. Mm. You're welcome. Oh, I'm caught up. Oh, my God. Holy shit, I'm caught up. So, okay, I'll take a couple more questions. I gotta get out of here. I, I'm leaving in two minutes, so... I apologize that I can't get to all your questions or comments and whatnot, but I gotta go to a meeting. Two meetings. And I gotta eat dinner at some point. I think the sushi restaurant closes at 9. I wanna go get sushi tonight. I don't think we'll get new classes. I would... Re new races? Sure. New, new classes? No. I don't want new classes in the game. They can't balance the game right now with all the classes and specs we have. Balance and fix those. So, I love Heroes of Storm. I played a couple games last night, actually. Yeah, the bay delay has been conquered. Yeah, Ali, it'd be in be. Uh. If you need link permission, Cubanic, uh, one of the mods can grab you. There'll be no bay at night tonight unless I want to come back on later tonight. Do something, Daniel. But I've been like. Just hanging out watching YouTube videos or playing some Witcher 3 and going to bed the last couple of nights, so. I don't know. I can never, I never, ever schedule a bay at night, so. The U.S. healthcare system is butts. Nailed it. Yeah, it's putting money on sushi. Heck yeah. My roommate finished paying back what he owed me from last month's rent, so I have some cash to throw at sushi. Final Boss TV income from any sources and never go to things and buy for myself. You're lonely on Nerd Island. Well, I'm on Nerd Island too. You, you see this room? Look at all this nerd crap. I'm on Nerd Island myself. The band wave that happened to the, all the, the, the bots and stuff, I think it was a positive change, obviously. Like, getting the bots out of the system would help the... the, the the gold community, at least, or the AH community. 
I mean, I had I had Guildies banned. They had to reroll characters because they're idiots. If you're in a bot in World of Warcraft, you're you're just stupid. I'm sorry, but you're stupid. It's the most popular MMO on the face of the planet. It's going to be patrolled, and you will get banned. Just don't bot. A buddy of mine that was banned botted his garrison. They would do his mine and his herb garden. Like, how fucking important is that? To lose your main character for six months to a year that you've worked all this time on. Like, don't just don't be stupid, please, friends. Just don't bot in World of Warcraft. It's just dumb. That's just stupid. It's really stupid. What the? What the hell, SJ? What? Yeah, garrison botting. Yeah, herb garden bot. Really dumb. Alrighty. It's uh, exclam WOD. Exclam WOD for the episode guide. There you go. Alright, friends, I'm getting out of here. Thank you all for tuning in for the post discussion. Uh, I'll probably cut this up um, into two parts and put it on YouTube. And um, we'll go from there. I'm going to get out of here, go get some food in me, and then have a meeting with my guest. Then I'm going to talk to Baloney tonight about his episode stuff because I want to make more YouTube content. So I'll see you all later. Have a wonderful the rest of the evening. I will um, definitely get back to you guys tomorrow after the show and then, of course, back on Monday's stream. So have a, a wonderful night. And I'll see you tomorrow for Shadow Priests with Twin Top and Hesp. Bye.